whether it be to undo a failed routing attempt or to unbrick a device or to prepare a smartphone to sell on the used market, there are times where it is nice to have an ability to install or restore stock firmware on a smartphone. For Motorola devices, the process for doing this has been made easy with Motorola's software fix tool. It's Jeff from Mctillion Tech, and today I want to go over the process of using this tool to restore or install stock firmware on a Motorola phone. Now to do this, you're going to need a few things. The Motorola smartphone, obviously. For this demonstration, I'm using the Motorola Edge Plus 2023 edition. A laptop or desktop running x86 Windows, not Windows on ARM. For the video demonstration, I will be using the Microsoft Surface Pro 7 Plus and a USB-C cable. Now the USB-C cable that came with your phone should work for this, but if your desktop or laptop does not have a USB-C port, it may be necessary to get a USB-C to USB-A cable uh, like this one over here. Also, before we begin, let me warn you that going through this process on a Motorola phone does involve wiping all the data that is on said Motorola phone. If possible, make sure to back up anything that is on the phone that you want to save before going through this process. And with that, let's get started. Step one, get the software fix tool. Doing this is pretty easy. Just go to the official Motorola support page, hover over the software tab on the top of the page, and click on software fix. From the software fix page, click on the download button and be directed to the download software fix page. From there, scroll down the page and click on the download button that is down here. And then just let the exe file for the software fix download onto your device. Do take note of the minimum configuration section of the page. There is no mention of any operating system other than Windows and no mention of Windows on ARM. While it may be possible to run this software through emulation or translation, I have no way of testing this without a Windows on ARM device. So as it is, software fix only seems to be supported on x86 Windows devices for now. Step 2. Install software fix. Navigate to the download folder or whichever folder you downloaded the exe file to. Click on the exe file and agree to allow the app to make changes to your device. Doing so will open up the software installer. Select the language that you want to use. Then accept the terms for using the tool. Select the location in which you want the software fix to be installed. From there, the installer will spend several minutes going through the installation process. Near the end of the installation process, you'll be asked if you want to install driver software. Depending on the drivers you already have installed, this step may not be strictly necessary. But I have run into issues when trying to use the software without having installed these drivers, so I would generally recommend going through with installing them. Once the installation has completed, you'll get this screen. If you have checked Launch the Program here, the Software Fix program will open once you click the Finish button. In my case, clicking Finish opened up the Moto FAQ page for the Software Fix before opening up Software Fix itself. Not sure why that happened. Step 3. Initial setup with Lenovo account. Once the app is open, click or make a check on the I agree with Lenovo privacy policy section here to begin the process of setting up software fix. Doing so will lead to a sign-in page where you'll be prompted to log into your Lenovo account. If you do not already have an account, you'll be able to make one here. You can also use your Google account or Microsoft account to help create a Lenovo account for you. Either way, you need to have an account to be able to make use of this software. Once you've been able to log into your account, you'll get an interface that looks like this. Since the software tool can be used for a variety of different things, there are a lot of different options here. For installing stock firmware on a Moto phone though, you simply need to stick to the Rescue tab and click on Phone. This should lead to a screen that comes with several different ways in which you can select the exact model of Moto phone that you want to be installing the stock firmware on. The easiest and recommended option here is Fast Boot Connection. This is the method that I will be utilizing for this video. At this point, let's leave the software fix tool alone for the time being and get our Motorola smartphone ready for firmware installation. Step 4. Putting Motorola smartphone in fastboot and connecting to Windows device. If it isn't already, turn off the Motorola smartphone. Once it's off, hold down the volume down button and the power button at the same time. Doing so should lead the screen to display something that looks a bit like this with small technical looking words and an image of the Android mascot going through surgery. From here, plug the USB-C cable that's already connected to the Windows PC into the Motorola smartphone. And from here, let's go back to the software fix tool. Step 5. Running software fix to install stock firmware. 
Once the USB-C cable is connected into the Motorola smartphone, SoftwareFix should automatically detect which model of Motorola smartphone you've plugged into the PC. Doing so will lead to a page that corresponds to the Moto smartphone model with info about the phone's name, Android version, warranty, etc. Make sure to check the info here before proceeding to make sure that SoftwareFix is actually bringing up the firmware that corresponds to the smartphone that you have. If something is off here, do not proceed with a firmware installation and look into what may be leading to the discrepancy. Assuming that all is well with this page, click on the download button to download the firmware for your Motorola smartphone. Depending on your PC and the internet connection that you have, this may take some time. Smartphone firmware can be several gigabytes large after all. Once the download is done, the SoftwareFix tool will come up with a screen that looks similar to the one before, but now has a rescue button. Click on rescue and follow the directions as they come up on screen. You will be warned here that the rescue, or the stock firmware installation, will lead to wiping everything that you currently have on your device. If you understand this and want to proceed, click on continue with rescue. Doing so will lead to a screen that looks a bit like this with a progress bar to let you know how far things are going with the stock firmware installation process. There will also be short descriptions as to what the program is doing at the lower left corner here, which is pretty useful. Around the 30 to 40% mark of the process, you will be asked if you want to clear all files from the device with a recommendation of doing so if you are installing firmware to fix an issue. I personally find that this option clashes with the warning that was presented earlier in the process, but it is what it is. Personally, I think wiping all existing data is for the best when going through with this process in that one should back up their data prior to engaging with the rescue process. Hence, I will be clicking erase all data here. From there, the firmware installation process will take another few minutes to complete, so just leave it and the Motorola smartphone alone as you wait for things to finish up. As soon as this process reaches the 90 or so percent mark, you will see a description of wait for reboot. At this stage, you should see the Motorola smartphone you have connected to your PC get rebooted. And as the reboot finishes up, you should get a rescue completed message in the software fix tool. Congratulations, your device has successfully completed the rescue software update. Click on OK here, and a prompt will come up asking if you want to remove the smartphone firmware that you downloaded onto your PC. It does take up a lot of storage space, so it is recommended that you let SoftwareFix remove the firmware file on its own. That said, if you have a suspicion that you're going to have to go through this process again with your Motorola smartphone, it may be worth keeping those files on your PC for now. And that's it. That's how you can install stock firmware on a Motorola phone using the SoftwareFix tool. If you found this video helpful or informative in some way, shape, or form, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like. Thanks for watching.